Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to 3D print this DIY SM7BS. A lot of you have asked how to actually get these files to print nicely. So I'm going to walk you through how exactly I do that. So here we have the download file for the SM7BS. This is version one. If this changes, it might look slightly different. We've got our folder here. We're going to go in and we're going to be printing or at least setting up to print each one of these files and i'll show you how i slice them now i'm going to be using prusa slicer specifically prusa slicer 2.4.2 as i have found this to be a fantastic slicer and i also use prusa printers so i'm actually going to be using prusa i3 mark 3s plus printers and that's currently what we've been using to print all of this stuff and when we sell these that's what you get from us is something printed on Prusa printers. So we'll be talking about that, but you know, you can use the slicer for other printers as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go over and we'll start with the body. There's two in this particular instance. We're going to use the XM 8500 model. We'll drop that in here. We have it. And this is the orientation you want it. You want it to be right side up. And one thing I would recommend you do is rotate it a little bit. So, this is the orientation you're if you're looking at the printer we've got you know original prusa here on the build plate and this over here is the back of the printer so i'm actually going to position these holes to the back so i'm going to use the rotate tool and you can rotate on the outside but if you bring your mouse on the inside it'll snap so i'm going to snap it so that the holes are facing the back of the printer Next, we can set up our print settings. You can go with anything here. For production, we've been going with 0.2 quality, but if I were doing this for myself and I had more time on my hands, I would go with 0.15 quality. So you could select that. Next, I'm gonna go into print settings here. And under advance, I'm going to change seam position from nearest to rear. What this is going to do, is we go back to the platter here, is it's gonna be hard to see on this particular model. Actually, let me lower the quality so we can really start to see things. Let me go to draft. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see this little line, there we go, right down the middle of the back of the model. Having that setting, uh, seam position set to rear, is going to force all of the lines or seams to be right in the back. So every time the printer goes around the model and has to go up to work on the second layer or the next layer up, it's going to do that at the same position on the back here so that you have a nice clean seam. If you don't do that, you'll have a lot of blobs or dots all the way around your model. So uh, that's a setting I would recommend doing. So that takes care of the main body. Pretty straightforward. Now let's work on our next. I'll go back and delete this one. We'll go over to Finder here and let's work on the mount. I'll drop that in. This one's pretty straightforward. The way we do it is we have the threads um, going vertically. So I'm going to use this tool right here, which is the place on face tool. And what this does is you can select a face and it will, you know, plop the model on that face. So I'm going to select the face with the threads here, like so. And now we're ready to go ahead and print this. So there's definitely going to be some overhangs here, but I found this prints just fine without support. And the important thing I have found is that when you print it in this orientation, the threads are much smoother. So for this particular model, again, I'll go with 15 quality because we don't need any of those previous settings and I will hit slice now. And now we're ready to go ahead and print this particular file. So that one's really straightforward. We'll go ahead and go back here, delete that. And let's grab our most tricky and difficult. And that's going to be the grill. So we're going to load this beast into our slicer. The first thing I'm going to do is flip it around because this is not a good, good orientation to work with. So I'm going to select it. We're going to choose the place on face. I'm going to choose the top that flips it around for us. And now uh, you can print with any print setting. We actually found that it works better if you print with a lower quality setting uh, because every layer here, the printer is going to go around and make these little divots. And that's a lot of little divots, a lot of potential stringing. So I have found that uh, around that point to quality works. So there is a problem, however. So let's go ahead and slice this and it'll take a while because there's a lot of little movements going on. All right. So now the slicing has been complete. The holes here look pretty good. Um, the issue is going to be the threads, however. So the threads need a lot more detail or resolution to be able to actually thread correctly. 
So now that we have the holes good, now the threads are an issue, but there's a super cool tool here in Slicer to be able to help us with that. And we can access it by going back to our 3D edit view instead of our slice view. And if we select the model on the top left here, you'll see we have variable layer height. I'm going to select that. Now we have this uh, bar over here and you can see if I move my mouse up and down, it's showing us where on the model we're going to be essentially changing the resolution or you know the layer height um, of our model. So I'm going to go down to, let's zoom in here actually, get a better position. I'm going to find where the threads start, which is right about here. I'm going to click and hold. And what it's going to do is increase the detail there. So now that I've increased that, I'm going to slowly, while still holding down the left mouse button, go up and we're going to increase the layer detail. And you can see how much more detailed these threads are now getting as we slowly raise it all the way up to the top, just like that. And I'm gonna call that good. Maybe I could go a little lower here. So let's bring it down, increase that last thread, something like that. So now we have our nice low detail holes, which just prints better. But then we have this high detail threads now we can slice our model again and wait for that to finish. And just like that, we have our completed model ready to print. So that has been an overview of how to take these 3D printed models for the SM7BS and to get them sliced. Every printer is a little different. All of these settings are going to be a little different depending on the quality level that you want and the printer that you have. But if you aren't using Prusa Slicer, there are a ton of videos online on how to set that up, how to get your printer working with the software. Um, but I just wanna help you guys out, especially this particular model has been a lot of issues for people when it comes to getting it printed. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.